So what we're going to be looking at today are capacitors in series and parallel. Now, one thing to notice is that if we were to calculate the total capacitance, if we have two or more capacitors connected together, the rules for that are pretty much the opposite compared to the rules for adding resistors. For example, if we were to be adding two capacitors in series, we don't just add them. What we need to do is calculate one over the total capacitance is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2, where C1 and C2 are the individual capacitances plus more if uh, there were more. The easiest way to calculate this into with a calculator would be just to uh, say that C total will be brackets 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 raised to the power of minus 1 because we've flipped the whole fraction around and if we input that into a calculator this will be by far the easiest. If we had two capacitors in parallel though, so we can see there's junctions here and those two capacitors C1 and C2 are clearly in parallel, then we'll just add the two capacitances. So this is the simpler case. So let's apply what we've just learned to an example. So we have the following circuit. We have a 300 microfarad capacitor, which is connected to two 400 microfarad capacitors, which are connected in parallel. What we need to do is calculate the total capacitance. Now notice that we have a both a series branch and a, and a, and a parallel branch really of the circuit. So first of all, we need to calculate the equivalent of the equivalent capacitance of those two capacitors which are connected in parallel. Now because they're connected in parallel, we can see that if they're in parallel, we'll just add them up. So I'm just going to say that in the parallel branch, the total resistance is 400. Which we'll call that, see parallel actually, is going to be 400 plus 400, which is going to give us 800 microfarads. Now, um, in order to calculate the equivalent capacitance with the um, with the one connected in series, I just need to use the formula that we've mentioned above, that the total capacitance is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 raised to the power of minus 1. So let's just do that. The total capacitance is going to be 1 over 300 plus 1 over 800, all of it raised to the power of minus 1. Notice that this 800, that actually acts um, as a, almost as if it was a separate capacitor. And if we were to input this into a scientific calculator, we are going to get uh, 218. And I'll just use, let's say, two significant figures, so 220 microfarads. Let's have a look at how these two formulas are derived. First of all, we're going to start off with capacitors in series. In order to derive this formula, we're just going to imagine a, um, a pretty simple circuit in which we have a cell which is uh, producing an EMF which we've called V total, and that is distributed across two capacitors. One is C1 with a potential difference across it V1, the other one is C2 with a potential difference across it being V2. The current in the circuit is I and that will be constant throughout the circuit. Now because of Kirchhoff's second law, we know that the sum of the EMFs across a closed loop is going to equal the sum of the individual PDs. In other words, V total is going to equal V1 plus V2. However, hang on a minute, we know that Q is equal to C over V in general, which means that rearranging for V, we know that V is going to equal Q over C. So that means that the total voltage is actually going to equal to the total charge, let's call it Q, divided by the total capacitance C total. 
and that's going to equal Q over C1. If we apply the same formula for V1 plus Q over C2. Now notice because the same current is flowing across this series circuit, all of those capacitors are going to acquire exactly the same charge. So what we can do is cancel out those Qs. And what we're left with is the formula 1 over C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And just once again, the by far the easiest way of just inputting this into a calculator to find C total would be just to write it down as that C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, all of it raised to the power of minus 1. So now let's have a go at deriving this second formula. In order to derive the formula for adding capacitors in parallel, let's imagine the following circuit. We have a power supply with an EMF equal to V that's connected across in parallel with two other capacitors, C1 and C2. Notice because this is a parallel circuit, the potential difference is equal to V across all of its branches. This is just due to the property of parallel circuits. The charge, however, is shared. The reason for that is because the current splits across a junction. For example, there's a junction right here, which means that some of the current is going to go to one capacitor and some and the rest of it is going to go through the other capacitor. This means that the two capacitors are actually going to have two different charges, amounts of charges stored onto them. The rule for adding charge in this case, due to conservation of charge, has got to be that Q total is going to equal Q1 plus Q2. Because Q is equal to CV, we know that C total times V is going to equal C1 times V plus C2 times V. Now notice that because this is a parallel circuit, the potential difference V is equal across all of the branches. So I can just go ahead and cancel out with my rainbow pen those Vs. And what I'm left with is that C total is C1 plus C2. So we have successfully proven the second formula as well for adding capacitors in parallel. Okay, folks, hope. so hopefully this makes sense. If there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and 